Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10. Little Petra. Little Petra is the smaller but no less significant archaeological site in Jordan, just north of the normal Petra. Just like its more famous counterpart, Little Petra was a Nabataean site from thousands of years ago. The buildings are carved into the mountain walls in the same fashion as they are at Petra, so that the great buildings blend in perfectly with the sandstone canyons. The only big difference is that Little Petra, as its name suggests, is quite a bit smaller than the other one. The entire site is connected by only about 1,400 feet of canyon and can be reached pretty easily by walking from the main site of Petra. The city of Petra and the surrounding area was lost to the Western world for hundreds of years. It was once a bustling trade center with very skilled builders, but it was often under attack from jealous societies like the Greeks and the Romans. We know Little Petra was built around the same time as the rest, back in the 1st century AD. And although archaeologists don't know exactly what all the buildings were used for, they do think the site was a kind of suburb of Petra. It also may have served as an agricultural center and resupply post. Whereas Petra was the capital of the Nabataeans, Little Petra could have also been where the ruling elites lived outside the rabble of the main city. Either that, or it was used specifically to house Silk Road traders when they visited Petra. After the Nabataeans declined, were destroyed by Rome, and eventually vanished, Little Petra fell into disrepair and was also abandoned. An earthquake helped finish everything off. For the last 1,500 years or so, it was used by Bedouin nomads for shelter. Only 15% of Petra has been explored, and scientists believe there is plenty more still waiting to be found. Number 9. The Throne of Agamemnon Some archaeological drama has been unfolding in Greece. It all has to do with an ancient mountain site in Peloponnese, which was once part of the great ancient kingdom of Mycenae. Archaeologist Christophilus Magidis claims that he and his team of experts discovered a giant stone slab that was once part of King Agamemnon's throne. This would place the rock back to around the 13th century BC, to the end of the Mycenaean civilization. These people flourished in the later part of the Bronze Age, and their influence spread throughout Greece, all the way across the Aegean Sea to Crete and the Cycladic Islands. King Agamemnon is one of the most famous figures in Greek mythology. He was the legendary commander of the Greeks during the Trojan War, and is often considered a mythical person. However, archaeological evidence shows that King Agamemnon may have really ruled Mycenae for a time, although it's still unclear what role he played in the Trojan War. So here's the drama. According to the Athens Archaeological Society, Christophilus Magidus didn't discover the king's throne. They said in a recent press conference that the archaeologist's claims are totally unfounded and that there is no evidence whatsoever to back up his supposed discovery. In fact, the society said the giant piece of stone that Christophilus found was probably just part of a household. It likely had nothing to do with the king. So now we are at a weird point where one archaeologist says there is proof of King Agamemnon ruling from the ruins high up in the mountains while well, another group of archaeologists say it's nothing but a scientific diversion to get attention. Number 8. Nippur The ancient Mesopotamian city of Nippur is one of the greatest mountain cities in the world. It was once the greatest holy city on earth, and represented the epicenter for religious teachings in Mesopotamia. It can be found today in southern Iraq, and lasted all the way from roughly 5000 BC until the year 800. That's almost 8,000 consecutive years without being abandoned. No easy feat for any city of the world. Nippur was the home of Enlil, the Mesopotamian god who ruled over the air, wind, earth, and storms. One of the reasons Nippur survived such bloody conflict in the early days of Mesopotamia was that it really made itself known as a holy place rather than a political capital. And when it came to wars, both sides were terrified of facing the wrath of the gods, and so no one dared take their army up the mountain to tear down the holy city. Nippur belonged to the civilization of Sumer. The Sumerians ruled most of southern Mesopotamia, and each of their cities was ruled over by its own king. Politics were a significant part of this culture, and they are still considered to be the very first highly advanced civilization to rise up. 
It comes as no surprise that they were able to make one of the world's first great cities so high in the mountains that it almost touched the sky. But alas, the once great holy city is now a decaying ruin. Even after it survived the violence of the Babylonians, the destruction of the old gods, the rise of Rome, it couldn't survive the rise of Persia. After the Sassanid dynasty came to power around 250 AD, Nippur was left to decay. Number 7. The Boot in the Himalayas In the year 1970, Italian climber Gunther Messner died on the slopes of Naga Parbat in Pakistan. He was trying to climb to the top of the mountain when he was swept away by a violent avalanche and never seen again. His death on that cold and unforgiving mountain was always assumed but never confirmed. Not until recently, 50 years after his death, when one of his boots was found frozen in a Himalayan glacier. To make the story even more tragic, Gunther had been accompanied by his brother Reinhold, who narrowly escaped the avalanche and wandered for six days through the freezing snow until he was rescued. Reinhold would go on to be the first man to climb Everest without oxygen and had always known that he had cheated death. But Reinhold never abandoned the memory of his dead brother. 52 years after Gunther died, his climbing boot was found on Naga Parbat, sitting there on the slope as if it hadn't moved in decades. But sadly, Gunther's whole body wasn't found, only a few pieces of bone nearby. Number 6. St. Hilarion Castle St. Hilarion Castle is one of the most imposing structures in the world. It's an actual castle perched at the very peak of a mountain, looking like something straight out of a fairy tale. It's located in the country of Cyprus, right at the top of the Kyrenia mountain range. From the ruins of this ancient fortification, one can overlook the entire Mediterranean Sea, behold all the land surrounding Cyprus, and look down on the little people moving through the city below like ants. On a clear day, you can even see all the way to Turkey. It's such a mystical place that Walt Disney allegedly used it in his inspiration when making Sleeping Beauty. And guess what? The Crusaders even used this castle almost 1,000 years ago. The history of the mountain castle can be traced back to around the 10th century. It was named after Saint Hilarion, a monk who fled persecution and died somewhere in a cave within the mountain. The Byzantines built a church and monastery on the mountain following his death. Then, shortly after, St. Hilarion Castle was built as a watchtower. People were posted in the tower to keep a 24-hour lookout for pirates threatening the coast of Cyprus. The castle became strategically important. The nobility began to use it as a summer resort, but by the 15th century it was left a ruin. The Venetians actually dismantled most of the castle just so they wouldn't have to pay for its upkeep anymore. Number 5. Great Flood Fossils 8,300 feet from sea level, at the very top of a mountain, a man took a video of some rocks. We don't know exactly which mountain this was, but the video was uploaded on TikTok and it showed mysterious rocks with fossils embedded inside of them. The rocks appeared to hold the remains of squid-like creatures, monsters with tentacles that almost looked like aliens. People were quick to label this discovery as proof of the biblical flood. But paleontologists came to the rescue to identify the fossils and explain the situation. It turns out what this guy found at the top of that mountain were actually crinoids, small sea creatures related to starfish. They lived in the Paleozoic era, and so the fossils were between 250 and 500 million years old. According to Natural History Museum curator Tim Ewen, they're called sea lilies, and they were like flowers anchored to the sea floor. Their tentacles were used to catch small food particles floating in the water and bring that food into its mouth, which was located at the base of its arms. Crinoids are still alive today, living over 300 feet deep in the world's oceans. The reason these ancient ones were found on the top of a mountain, over 8,000 feet above sea level, has to do with tectonic plates. Mountains are made when the tectonic plates in the Earth's crust shift pushing matter upward very slowly until it forms a point and the plates stop moving. When the crinoids were alive, the mountain would have been at the bottom of the sea. The animal died, its fossils settled into the dirt, and then it got pushed up over a span of millions of years until it reached the top of the mountain. Number 4. Lost Roman Sandal 
1,700 years ago, somebody lost their sandal. It was in the 4th century AD, and an ancient traveler was making their way through a challenging mountain pass 6,000 feet above sea level. We don't know where they came from, but perhaps Rome. Whatever the case, they found themselves in western Norway. And for whatever reason, this person lost their sandal as they moved through the snow, and it got stuck in the ice. All these years later, that mysterious sandal has finally been found. If you think your shoes don't last long enough, you're right. This worn leather sandal, which was all the rage in Rome in the 4th century, has survived for almost 2,000 years. It was only revealed because of the unusually warm summer in Norway and was spotted by a random hiker. The hiker was educated enough to realize it had major historical value, and so he photographed the artifact and pinned its location. It was later picked up by archaeologists with a program called Secrets of the Ice, who specialize in glacial discovery. They've already discovered other things in Norway's melting glaciers, from medieval skis to discarded tunics once worn by Viking warriors. Number 3. Ancient People in the Hills Researchers believe they may have just made the oldest archaeological find on the Indian subcontinent. They came across rock art, mysterious engravings, and ancient tools inside caves and rock shelters in the mountainous Mangarbani region. The caves and shelters were used in the Paleolithic era by primitive humans. Plus, Mangarbani is part of one of the oldest mountain ranges in the entire world, but was once a great series of towering rock formations stretching all the way from North India down into the West. But since ancient times, the mountains have been blasted away or naturally destroyed, and very few remain. The cave paintings were first discovered in 2021 by a local environmental activist. The activist came across them in a remote part of the forest and couldn't believe their luck. As for the stone tools, they were found in the rock shelters. The tools are extremely basic, made from pebbles and flakes of rock, and they represent the first standardized system of tool making. Putting all these awesome discoveries together, researchers are confident that humans occupied the mountains here for at least 100,000 years, only fleeing about 1,000 years ago. It's now looking like Mangarbani could be one of the biggest Paleolithic sites in the world. Number 2. Matera Matera has been described by some as the most spectacular city in all of Italy. It's an ancient place filled with mountain grottos and caves carved into the mountainside. Archaeologists have found proof of human habitation in these mountain caves going back to the Paleolithic period, up to 7,000 years ago. They were simple people living in the dark niches and foraging for food. All these years later, many of the caves have been converted into suave hotels and trendy restaurants. The very places where early humans clapped stones together to make fire, rich tourists are now complaining about the slow Wi-Fi. What's really interesting is that Matera is a recent phenomenon. Almost nobody knew about it until 1993, when it was put on the UNESCO World Heritage Site list. And before that, Matera was considered a scourge on Italian society. Up until the 1950s, it was known specifically for poverty, malaria, and infant mortality. People were still living inside the caves, with no running water or electricity, and the same deplorable conditions as thousands of years earlier. Between 1953 and 1968, about 30,000 people were moved off the mountain and into real physical houses, which were built in a new modern city below. Number 1. Human Cave Fossils In a dusty mountain cave in South Africa, fossils of ancient human ancestors have been discovered. These fossils are older than anyone could have ever imagined. In fact, the fossils discovered at Sterk Fontaine Cave are so old that some scientists can't even believe it. They date back to about 3.6 million years ago, making them even older than the legendary Lucy fossil found in the Ethiopian desert back in 1979. Lucy belonged to a species called Australopithecus afarensis that lived 3.2 million years ago. Preliminary research shows that the fossils found in the South African cave also belong to the genus Australopithecus. However, they may have been a different species. The cave itself is part of the UNESCO World Heritage Site Cradle of Humankind. It's considered to be the cradle of all humanity, located in the rocky hills northwest of Johannesburg. 
The caves in this area have more Australopithecus remains than anywhere else in the world, and they predate any other hominin found on Earth by over one million years. Thanks for watching! Would you rather live in a castle or a cave high up in the mountains? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye!